Hi again. Uh, we're going to have a look at Lucis Pro. Now I use uh, Lucis for um, in many ways, but the main way that I use it is on HDR images. HDR images come out from Photomatics being fairly flat and uh, extremely soft. And um, using the enhanced detail in Lucis Pro is an essential part of my workflow. So let's um, let me just talk you through what I do here. Here's the original image. It's on the screen right now. Shot. Uh, on Ellis Island in the non-public uh, part of Ellis. We were lucky to get in there and I think we we're the, one of the last people to get in there to photograph so Mark and I were very lucky to get in there and and we have some work to um, to cherish from it. So anyway here's uh, the original image and we create our new layer and we will apply Lucis Pro 6.0.4, which is the latest and probably last version of it. Um, I keep the scan lines at 32 for this particular usage because I want the crispest um, image I can get. Mix with original color, I will do that in layers because it's faster. And assign original image color, I, I vary on this one I will bring it up to what I wanted to look just like this so I will assign the image color that's going on now to whatever we process because when you split channels it does affect the color but you can tell it to skip the affectation keep it looking as normal as possible and then we're going to display in black and white mode because we're going to eyeball this stuff and uh, although I've got a preset I still eyeball each channel and I want to get um, things as sharp as I can. Now this is only an enhanced detail technique. It's not a sharpening technique. They are two different things. Okay, and my preset, which is set up through experience, gives me a jumping off point. It's called preset 828. See, it changes the enhanced number to 121 in the red channel. Watch how it pops up here as it's processing it. You see, it really brings really pops it out. It's much sharper. It looks like a red filter almost the way it affects that. Well, that's why it's called the red channel. And then green. So as you click on that, it moves the number down to 121, which is my assigned preset. It doesn't change them all at once. It changes the channels as you select them. And this looks um, pretty good. These are, are not set in. So that's my preset. It's not set in stone. I can actually move it down a bit depending on the image to bring in a little more detail and um, yeah that's okay and then we'll pick the blue channel just going right down the right down the line here and blue channel is always a bit weird and we'll see what that does yeah that really gives it that that mood that uh, film noir kind of look you know that could be a little bit more crisp so I'm gonna pull it down a little lower and then see what I'm watching this detail right here to see how sharp that comes in okay not a big difference but I think these all three of these channels look pretty good so I want to see them in color first it should look pretty dramatic it should look very different from the original okay it's much brighter much more more edge to it you know and, and um, and don't forget, we're going to blend this with the original, so we want it a little bit over the top. Um, and I'm going to okay this out. And that'll open in our additional layer here. There it is. Much crisper. It's got some nice edge to it. Let's uh, bring it back to about 50. My normal first step is to bring this back to about 50 or so. And then just turn it off and see before and after. It could be a little bit higher, about 75, and then we're before and after. Um, okay, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to flatten it. Now, I generally, there's one more move that I do a lot, which I, I think works on this kind of image where you want to like draw the eye uh, into the frame, and that is the uh, Nick filter. Go down here to Nick software, color effects. Pro, which is amazing by the way. I use um, it on every image almost, you know. Now we have our filter. Dark and light and center. 
and we'll see how this works. We're going to hit the default button. Okay, that's the original. Not a whole lot of difference. But we're going to pick our center point right here. And we're going to place that right where the brightest part of the wall is, somewhere around, somewhere around in here. And you saw a little like light shading going across the the, the, the frame there. Hold that in the space bar before and after. Look at the very top. See, it's kind of giving you a small vignette already. But I'm going to accentuate that to really draw your eye into that picture space there. So I'm going to make the center size much smaller. Give us more of a tunnel type look. And bring the border luminosity so you darken the edges more. Bring that down. The border is anything outside of the chosen center. We're bringing that down, so let's hold the space bar and look at before and after. And already, it, it's drawing your eye further back into the picture space. Now, if we make the center even brighter, so our center luminosity, we're going to move up a little bit. And then pull the border luminosity back a little bit. And then bring our center, sorry, wrong direction, this way. And then make our center size a bit smaller to accentuate the uh, tunnel look. And now we're looking at uh, before and after. Look at that. Well, that just pulls you right down into that, that hole there, doesn't it? A little more ominous looking, etc. Um, what else do I want to do here? Luminosity is bright. Border luminosity is pretty dark. Center size is fairly small. Make it a bit larger, just to see what it does. See how it lightens up now? Now let's hold the space bar down. We'll say before and after. So it basically just brightens the center a little bit more, but it tones down the edges. So rather than being evenly lit, basically, it, it gives you that. Like that patchy lighting, very moody hallway type of thing. We're going to okay this out. I kind of like this, the way it is. And you'll see a change. There it is. And let's uh, flatten this out because I like it. And then we'll go into uh, to history. And we will look at before, I'm sorry, before, after. Look at that. Look at that. That's the original HDR was just out of photomatics with no other adjustments. Even using contrast in photomatics doesn't make it pop the way working outside post-processing with HDR does. That's the original, and that's the final. Huge difference. And that's one of the ways that I use um, Lucis Pro um, with every HDR picture I take. So that's it. Thank you. See you online.